everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder if all of Lum and Abner's overweight friends are using the Horlick weight control plan. Judging by the many letters we've received, a lot of them certainly are. And finding it safe and satisfactory, too. Briefly, the plan is this. Instead of eating a heavy, hard-to-digest lunch, these overweight listeners are drinking a good glass full of Horlick's malted milk at noon. This makes a sustaining, easy-to-digest lunch, one that keeps you alert. You get none of that drowsy feeling that comes from eating a big midday meal. Yet, and this is the point, Horlick's offers sustaining nourishment without the excess calories of a heavy meal. And excess calories are just what bring your excess worries. Try Horlicks yourself. It saves time, money, and health. All you need is a package of Horlicks malted milk. And this you can get from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner have quite a problem on their hands. They're enjoying a splendid patronage to their circus, but for the past two days, the entire receipts have been stolen out of the safe in the wagon that serves as their office. So far, they have found no definite clue to the mysterious disappearance of the funds, and yet there are several who might be implicated in the theft. Well, as we look in on the circus grounds today, we find Abner and Squire Skimp in the office discussing the matter. Listen. Well, that's the reason I come over, Abner. I just want to have a heart-to-heart talk with you. I know all this money disappeared. It looks bad for me. It's no more than natural that I'd be the first one that you'd suspicion. Well, I ain't accused you of taking it, Squire. Well, no, you haven't come right out and said so, Abner, but natural with you and Lum and me being the only ones that know the combinations on that safe. I'd be the first one that you'd think took it. Yeah, I reckon so. I've always tried to live honest, to do right by my fellow man. And that's why it grieves me so to think that that you'd even suspicion for one minute that I'd slip in this wagon under the cloak of darkness and take from that safe money that belonged to you and love. Two of my oldest friends. Well, now, Squire, now, I, I wouldn't let myself get all tore up over this. Well, it's a matter of, of uh, defending my honor, Abner. A man reaches my age in life, Abner, he, he just ain't got much left to live for except his reputation and his friends. Well, a little money laid up, too, won't hurt nothing. Yes, but if I had to sacrifice my principles for a few paltry dollars, take advantage of old friends like you and Lum, I'd choose a pauper's grave first. Doggy Squire, you wouldn't have made a bad out at preaching, you know what? Well, I, I just want you to know, Abner, that although the finger of suspicion is pointed at me, my conscience is clear. I've done nothing to betray your trust. Well, I told you I didn't think you done it, Squire. A- ain't no use for you to keep telling me that you never stole the money. Well, now, that's fine. I'm glad to hear you say that, Abner, I am. I, I'm willing to hire a detective out of my own pocket to come in here and clear up the whole thing rather than to have you suspicion me for one minute. Well, I don't see no need in doing that, Squire. We're bound to find out eventually who took it. Well, Abner, I want to talk to you a, a little confidential. Don't want you to quote me on this, but... Uh, has it ever occurred to you that uh, Lum might be taking that money himself? Lum? <laughs> what in the world would he be wanting to take it for? It belongs to me and him. Besides that, that wouldn't be stealing if he took it. Well, of course, uh, half of it belongs to him, but half of it is yours, too. Yeah, but Lum never done nothing. He, he, he he just had never had nothing to do with it. I'll guarantee you that's why. He's just as honest a man as ever draw breath. Why, you seen the surprised look on his face when he opened that safe and seen the money was gone. Yes, but now he might have been looking that way on purpose, Abner, to throw you off the track, you know. 
No, no. No, I, I've known Lum too long, Squire. Had too many dealings with him. It, it couldn't have been him. Well, I don't know, Abner. I don't think that Lum would do a thing like that ordinarily, no. But sometimes, you know, a man can be influenced into doing something that he knows is wrong. Uh, 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 what do you mean by that, Squire? Well, just to talk straight, Abner. Now, here's this bareback rider, Zinola. She seems to have swept Lum right off his feet. And I believe he'd do nearly anything that she told him to. Oh, yeah, she's got him locked her right around her finger. There ain't no doubts about that. Well, now, she's a smart young lady and would know just how to work a fellow like Lum. Why, the other day she had him all revved up to buy a big electric sign to put across the top of the tent there with her name on him. Yeah, and he'd have did it, too, if that money had to disappear. Why, sure he would. He was all set to go right down by. Yeah, I, I talked to him for three hours trying to talk him out of that idea. He was all set to go down and pay eight hundred dollars for that sign just just so that he could put the Noah's name across that big lights, he said. I know he was. And I'll tell you something else now. I just heard this a while ago, Abner. Zenola told a snake charmer that Lum was going to buy her a big diamond engagement ring. A diamond engagement ring? Yes, and now uh, that could be, you know, what he intends to do with the money. No, no. No, I don't believe he'd do that, Squire. No, not Lum. Well, now, you know that he hadn't got any money of his own to be di- buying diamonds with. It's that woman, I tell you, Abner, Zenora. She's putting these ideas in his head just to show her the world. Well, now, Squire, I, I just never would be. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, say something now. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, uh, it's just like I say, Abner, you men ought to make a lot of money out of this circus. The crowd has been good here lately. Uh, yeah, gentlemen, gentlemen. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Lum. Good evening, good evening. Yeah, come on in, Lum. Uh, keep your seat, Squire. I can sit right over here. Oh, no, no, Lum. I, I was just fixing to go anyway. I've uh, got a little business to attend to before the performance tonight. Well, I'll be around there for long, Squire, to open up the box office. All right, Lum. What's the matter, Lum? Oh, I'm just getting to where I can't hardly stand to be around that Squire Stamp. Yeah, what's the matter if you and Squire? Well, I just don't like the altitude he's t- taking about this money disappearing. Oh, well, now, Lum, I-, I wouldn't pay no attention to nothing if he said. Well, you-, you wouldn't be talking that way if you knowed who he's trying to lay it on to. Oh, yeah, I already know. I never liked it myself. I don't blame you. I run him out of the wagon here this morning. I wouldn't stand for him making such a accusation. Well, now, that, that ain't going to get the money back from him yeah. accusing somebody. I'll bet you whoever's been stealing it gets a surprise tonight, all right. <laughs> a surprise? Yeah, I ain't going to put it in that safe no more. You ain't? Why, no. They got it out of there twice. They ain't no use to just give it to them. Yeah, well, now, I wouldn't be carrying that much money around on me, Lum. That's dangerous business now. Well, I ain't going. going to carry it on me. I'm going to hide it in another place tonight. I ain't going to put it in the safe. Oh. I'll hide it in the bottom of that trunk over there tonight and then take it out in the morning, get it down to the bank, and deposit it. Yeah, I was going to put it in the trunk, you say. Wait a minute, be quiet. Yeah, what's the matter? Wait a minute, I hear something. Huh? Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Uh, what are you doing there? Hold on there. Who is that? Cedric, is that you? Yes, Mom. Well, what are you doing slipping around the side of the wagon there? Well, uh, I wasn't slipping around, Mr. Lum. I... <laughs> I just started to come in the wagon, and I seen you and Mr. Abner was talking some business, so I started to leave. <laughs> well, well, don't be hanging around this wagon. Just stay away from here. Here's Mom. Ah, oh, Claude, you scared me to death, Mom, when you jumped up that way and to the door there. Yeah, I reckon I'm a little nervous. This thing's got me about half out of my head, Abner. Abner, you reckon Cedric could know anything about where that money's been going? You mean, you reckon if he stole the money, Cedric? Yeah. Oh, why, no, Rom. Why, Cedric couldn't get in the safe if he wanted to. He, he don't even know the combination. Well, now, that's just all you know about it. He knows that combination a heap better than me or you does. You mean Cedric knows the combination to the safe? Yes, sir. Oh. You know, I never can recollect the thing myself, and this evening I went to open the safe, and they just me and Cedric in here, and I couldn't recollect the combination, and he sat right there and told me what it was. He did. Yeah, I never thought nothing about it at the time, but I got to studying about it today. 
I don't know him. Uh, I hate to think such a thing about Cedric. I've always liked the boy. Oh, Cedric's a fine boy. No? Uh, he's worked there in the store for us over Pine Ridge for years. Oh, I've never sure. had no trouble with him. Oh, I'll, I'll trust Cedric, Lon. I'll give him chances to take things. He's just honest as he can be. Yeah, but I'll sworn it's, it's pranking mighty strong at him. Well, now, Lon, I wouldn't go nothing on that now. He, he might have just watched, you know, me and you open the safe and happen to learn the combination by heart, you know, accidentally. I don't know. Well, it's him or Squire Skimp one. I know that. Well, uh, I, I don't believe Squire done it either, Lom. I thought so maybe for a while, but he was in here a while ago and talking to me about it, and he, he just might not have brought tears to my eyes tell me how innocent he is. How innocent he is? Oh, yeah. He sat here and told me on his word that he never had a thing in the world to do with it. Well, you don't expect him to come right out and admit to it, do you? Well, no, Ron, but he talked awful honest to me. Well, a fellow that steals money that way ain't going to admit to it. Well, right? no, but Squire, he looked me right in the eye when he said it. Oh, I tell you, Abner, after some of the other stunts Squire Stamps pulled on us, I wouldn't put nothing past him. Well, there's one thing about it. If you hide it in the trunk tonight, why, well, me and you can watch your face. Find out what you're huh? saying. Huh? 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 Uh, did you hear somebody? Yeah. Who is that? What do you want? Wait a minute. I seen you hold her out, you. Who is it, Lom? Who is it? What's the matter? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. I couldn't see for sure. Just as I stepped to the door here, he run around the corner of the wagon. Well, why didn't you shoot? I never had nothing to shoot with. Wait a minute, listen. Uh, what, where are you going next time? Listen. Somebody get hurt the first thing you know. Running around here like a wild man. Uh, is that you, Squire? What's the matter? Oh, that brother Zenora's come carrying around the end of the wagon there and run right square into me. Knocked me right flat on my back. Zenora's brother. Hmm. Well, this seems to only complicate matters more than ever. Who stole that money? Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. S.J.B. of Covington, Kentucky, writes to tell us of a conversation between two youngsters playing baseball that she overheard recently. We thought maybe you'd like to hear it, so we're going to reenact it. Listen. Let's quit, Bob. Oh, gee, it's my turn to bet. You can bet first tomorrow. No, I can't. I gotta go to the dentist. Besides... Oh, I'm tired. I'm gonna quit. Oh, all right. You just can't take it, that's all. Who can't? I'll bet you're tired, too, only it's your time to bet. Maybe so. But I wouldn't be if I had some Wallach's tablets. Huh? What are they? Oh, you know. Wallach's smaller milk powder done up in tablets. They give you a pep. Well, let's get some. How much are they? Only a dime. How much you got? I got four cents. Well, I got three. That's seven. Mom will give us the rest. Come on, let's go after it. And that was all that Mrs. S.J.B. had time to hear. But it was enough to show how popular Horlick's tablets are becoming. Youngsters, motorists, early golfers, shoppers, people in all walks of life are finding Horlick's tablets great for warding off hunger and fatigue. Have you tried them yet? You can get them, if you haven't, at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick's, who now bid you all good night and good health.